I understand sometimes when we talk about the draft and we talk about prospects that people can be very wary and cautious of kind of the one-year wonders. The guys that only had the one year of year real production, maybe they were injured before, maybe they didn't get much of an opportunity before. And going off of that one year, it's an incredibly small sample size. So it could be a really risky evaluation to say, do you believe everything that your eye beholds off of that one year? Or did you not get enough of the picture to be able to give a full and complete evaluation? I can think of a couple defensive players in this year's draft, if they had come out um, in the 2017 draft, how differently would Arden Key and Harold Landry have been viewed? If those were their only years as a starter and that's what you saw out of them was 2016, you'd say, oh my God, these are both top 10 talents potentially. A lot of people would at least. But now coming into this year, they had another year, they had injuries and different issues. Both of them did in their own ways. And Landry still thought of as a first round pick, but not a top 10 type of talent, I think in a lot of places. And Arden Key is probably off of some team's draft boards. And if he's on there, he might be day three or might be mid to late day two. So I just use that as kind of an example when thinking about a guy like Leighton Vander Esch is you pretty much only got one year of a sample out of him. He's had some injuries in the past. You've had the reports that he's flunked uh, his medicals or at least been pulled off of a couple of teams draft boards due to medical concerns. Whether that's true or not, who knows? At this time of year, who the hell knows? Those could be reports that are leaked out there. But you also hear about teams like the Titans canceling visits with him because they don't think he's going to be there at 25, which I tend to agree with. Um, but Van Der Esch is pretty much a one-year wonder. But in that one year, you got a lot to wonder about. He's got great size for the position as an inside linebacker, middle linebacker, whether it be in a 4-3 or a 3-4. You have no worry about him being able to hold up from a size standpoint inside. He's a really good athlete. His 4.65, he ran at the 40, shows up on film. He's not quite as explosive or athletic as a guy like Roquan Smith or Tremaine Edmonds, but he doesn't take that much of a back seat. He still has enough range to be able to play sideline to sideline. Um, he's a guy that you see all down versatility in that can play the run, whether it be up the middle or in pursuit or playing sideline to sideline. Here's a guy with a little bit of pass rush upside, shows a little bit of ability to get to the quarterback on the edge. Um, here's also a guy that shows you some nice upside in coverage. And as a guy that you could trust to be able to turn and run with running backs and tight ends, um, be effective in zone. I, I look at him, and I've seen a lot of people like be down on him or think that he's overrated or that he's this or that he's that. And they may be right, but so far I just really haven't seen it. I look at him and I'm like, do I think ranking him above uh, both Roquan Smith and Tremaine Edmonds might be a bit ambitious? Yes. I think that might be a bit ambitious. But to me, I like more of what I saw out of him than I saw out of, let's say, Rashawn Evans at Alabama. But that, again, doesn't necessarily mean that Evans is a buster either. You know, it... it this is a pretty good linebacker class. And you're going to have guys like this that are one-year wonders that can come in and be very, very good NFL players. Like I think about Clay Matthews, that linebacking core that U USC had in the late 2000s. In that 2006, 2007, 2008 time, of time range. The big names were Brian Cushing and Ray Mawaluga. Clay Matthews was primarily a one-year starter. Yet yeah, he was the one that people were buzzing about. He was the one that went on to have by far the best pro career out of those three guys. And he was really primarily a one-year wonder. Well, sometimes one-year wonder shouldn't scare you off. What might scare some teams off is that he lost some games due to injuries and maybe there's some concerns about whether he can hold up uh, physically. Um, there's going to be concerns about his feel for the game, instincts and awareness, and trying to work through and determine whether that is only really having one year of live game action on a consistent basis, one year as a starter, 
Is he a guy that just has room to go in terms of studying in the film room and being able to see game situations? Will he get a better feel for it? Or is he not very instinctual by nature? I feel like that's a concern because he's a guy that can have some really bad blown assignments in coverage from time to time. He can be really good when he gets his assignment right, but when he doesn't, it could be really bad for the defense, similar to a Tremaine Edmonds, but not quite to that bad of a level. I think another major concern for him is going to be uh, that people are going to think that he's not all that physical, and I could see that from time to time, is that they don't feel he's the most physical player. He's a little bit more of a finesse guy, even at 256 pounds. But I felt like there were times where he showed some physicality. I do. I don't think he's quite the monster that I necessarily would want inside, but I think he's plays strong enough and physical enough. Um, but he always seemed to be find a way to be around the football. Now, I know maybe it's because he's a white boy, he played at Boise State, da, 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 only one year starter. Maybe that inclines people to not like him that much. I don't know what it is. But I look at the dude and I see a guy that is a first round talent. I see a guy that I'll be stunned if he isn't taken within the first 20 picks in the draft come Thursday. I'll be absolutely floored if he doesn't go in the top 20. I really would be. Because I think teams are going to look at that size, that athleticism, that upside, and they're going to fall in love with this guy. I'll be absolutely surprised if he lasts past Dallas at pick 19. I'll be really, really surprised. Maybe he goes just a little bit after, but I feel like it's a pretty certain thing that he goes before Rashawn Evans. And I think the distance in some NFL teams' minds between him, Leighton Van Der Esch, and guys like Roquan Smith and Tremaine Edmonds isn't maybe as much as fans in the NFL draft media and draft Twitter might like to make it to be. But I feel pretty confident going on the record and feel like saying that Link Vanderesh is going to be a really good linebacker in the NFL and is going to make some people look foolish in a couple of years.